Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep I think it's number 85. I should have a little party when I get to 100. <sighs> so only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes. And if you watch it on YouTube, please subscribe. So what was I going to do? I'm going to talk about what I don't know I never know I don't plan these things I don't uh, just in case you're wondering I'm not sitting around for three or four hours doing a big plan of what I'm going to talk about it's like, okay let's talk about that and then move to the next subject and then go back to that subject then move to something else and then go full circle and come back to what I originally started speaking about. No, I don't don't plan any of this. I'm just talking. And the idea really behind this thing is that by listening to me just talking you can naturally, your brain naturally starts to slow down through boredom. <sighs> and you just... Everything becomes slower, you know? Everything just slows down and I suppose in some ways you start, I suppose you you build rapport with me, well I like to call it report, you build rapport, you build rapport with me and because I'm going quite slowly you then start to go slowly and someone uh, told me yesterday although it might have been earlier today I think it was probably early this morning so yeah it was today but the thing is I classed yesterday as before I went to bed and when I wake up, then it's a new day, even if it is half past 12 in the afternoon. For me, it's a new day. And yesterday it can be all the way up to four o'clock in the morning. Today, if I'm still awake, that's how I kind of view time. I'm not saying that I've reinvented time and should write a book about it a short history of time that's quite a catchy title isn't it like a little short history of time which is kind of what I've just done there well it's, I suppose it's not really a history but it's a short description of what I do with time I suppose the history bit would be how long have I been doing this for? And I'd say probably I've always kind of thought that way about, you know, I go to bed and when I wake up, that's the new day. And I reckon, I reckon that a lot of people feel that way. That the day starts when you wake up not when you're still awake so let's say for example 
uh, you're awake on a Saturday evening at one o'clock in the morning. The next day hasn't started because you're still awake. Even though officially, and when I say officially, I don't know who officially made up these rules. Show me the rule book. And it's really weird. When I said show me the rule book, I had an image of the Monopoly board. Or actually the Monopoly uh, box. Because I think the box with board games is just very important, isn't it? Because you got the... It keeps all of the bits together. So if you was to play Monopoly and you didn't have all the bits... You know, like the, what is it? Is it a horse, the hat, the iron? <laughs> Why? But yeah, uh, is there a horse? Or is it a dog or a donkey? But I know there's an iron in Monopoly. You know, the characters that you can be. Uh, is there a pig? washing machine I really I forget but I know there's an iron and isn't there a a little man that looks a bit like Colonel Sanders from KFC I think I wonder if Colonel Sanders from KFC really was that small though that he could fit on a Monopoly board probably probably not it's hard to know isn't it that's things with history it's like I could call my book History of Time but I reckon if I write it in my underpants my underwear which is what I would do. I'd be wearing my underwear while I was writing the book. I perhaps should let people know that I'm wearing my underwear. So perhaps call it a brief history of time. I'm taking a little bow there. I'm very pleased with that. It's made my day. I'm ever so, ever so chuffed with myself. But Monopoly boards, the the boxes are quite good because they keep the things together. Although I have played board games where I've used sort of other items, uh, like with Monopoly, uh, I remember didn't really work out but I tried to use a real iron because the the, uh, the the iron was missing is it a little dog an iron a hat and there's a dog isn't there so using a dog like a real dog it's not just the size so you keep walking around and knocking everything off the board so perhaps that's why they had them as uh, little pieces perhaps the original board game did actually have like a real iron and a real dog and a real hat and they all had their problems you know the iron was too hot and a bit too big really for the board the dog kept doing wheeze and poos everywhere and knocking everything off and the hat, hat had its own problem. It just didn't do anything. It just sat there. Because hats can be quite lazy. I'm not being prejudiced against hats. I'm just saying that they can be quite lazy. They don't do much. They just sit there. I don't think hats really contribute 
enough. But I'll stop talking about hats. So Monopoly, I used to quite like playing Monopoly a bit. When I was younger, now everything really happened when I was younger. But the I remember probably talking Christmas time uh, after dinner, after lunch, and me and my brothers and my parents and you know the family really. I just she just said just me and the family didn't have to go around each individual person Uh, I'm not sure if my dad was wearing a Christmas jumper or Christmas what do you call it in America not not, is it cardigan jumper not sofa because that's a different that's something you sit on um top jumper top cardigan see a cardigan is more something that you have buttons on that you do up isn't it that's a cardigan and I don't mind cardigans as long as they're baggy I like my tops to be baggy so that I don't like really into tight tops just sometimes I think if I've got a tight top on I look a little bit like a you know like a sausage in a skin just you know sausage meat being pushed into a skin or like a an icing bag or something like that. It doesn't. I don't know. I just don't like it. It just doesn't. Doesn't feel comfortable to me. We have weird names, don't we? Comfort table. See the comfort bit, but what's the table got to do with it? I'm not wearing that because it doesn't feel comf- comfort table. Well, where did the table come in? We're talking about a top or a top hat. Again, why do you call it a top hat? It's a hat. It's always at the top. It's on your head. Unless it's the top hat, like your favourite hat, out of your hat collection. I used to have a hat once. I had a trilby. And the reason I got it was because I wanted to be like my brother, who had a trilby. And uh, I remember... The first time I saw him wearing it, uh, because my brother's taller than me, so I looked up, and I suppose I looked straight ahead, and I looked up. And I said, what? what's that he said what what's what I said what's that on your head he said it's a hat and I kind of knew it was a hat it wasn't it wasn't so much what is it is a hat I knew it was a hat but I just didn't recognise the type of hat it was because during my life I think up to that point because I was probably 16 at the time I think 
maybe 15, 16. During that point, up to that point rather, the only hats that I recall seeing would be perhaps flat caps and cowboy hats. See, when I was a kid, I used to wear cowboy hats because that's what we did. Because that's what the kind of toys that were around. So I used to have a cowboy, um, like a uniform, not a uniform, but a costume. So it'd be the hat, which would have a string, which I could do up underneath my chin to keep the hat on in the wind. Isn't it weird how sometimes things just rhyme? And uh, I had a little top on, like a cowboy. It's proper set up to look like a cowboy. A little cowboy top on, and which I'm not sure if it did up, but it was like a kind of like a cardigan kind of thing. And then I don't think I had. Oh yeah, I had a a holster and like two guns either side. They weren't real; they were just plastic toys. And um, then I had these. What were they called? Not skittles. They they were things that we could put on the back of my shoes. And they turned around, and they were like spiky. And um, and it's what cowboys used when they were on horses and stuff, not stilts. Um. Anyway, I never got to really. I wore them, but they were plastic. But I never, never got to sit on a horse wearing them. And then there was other costumes, that, things that wouldn't be allowed today, so I won't go into them. But there was a lot of cowboy films on television when I was a kid. And the thing is, they weren't up-to-date cowboy films. That was what's weird about it, is... The cowboy films were all old. So I was... Let's see. When I was wearing that... The last time I wore the cow, cowboy outfit... I was what? About... 32? No, I'm joking. No, it's 29... No, it was about, uh, I don't know, 11, 12, 10, 9, 8, I don't know. Um, but at that time, the cowboy films would had all been made in the 60s. You know, the big cowboy films. Maybe the early 70s, 60s, 50s, 60s. So I don't really know why they were so popular, the like cowboy films, but they used to play them on television. Every Sunday, there'd be a cowboy film. And then I think even during the day, there'd be like films on like in the afternoon and stuff weekdays so I don't really know why maybe it was uh, maybe it was like a celebration of America or something like over here because we've always had a very close connection 
uh, media-wise to the USA, like television programs, films, music, stuff like that. So I don't know what other hats. Let's so lose the cowboy hat. Uh, what other hats had I seen? Oh, an astronaut hat. I'd see an astronaut hat, not in person, so I've never actually known an astronaut. Even now, it's strange, isn't it? I've never actually ever bumped into an astronaut. Never, wherever I've been, I've lived in a few places. Um, admittedly, I've never, I've never gone into a pub that's near NASA or near an astronaut school or wherever astronauts live. But I've never ever bumped into someone and just said, oh, or oh, got talking to somebody, so what do you do? He said, yeah. Oh, I'm an astronaut. Oh, cool. You're also a man, so move along. And I'd like to talk to a lady. Um, not like, no, well, maybe. Astronaut, never, ever, ever spoken to an astronaut. Oh, the amount of times I used to get stuck talking to men. I'd be at a party. And I just end up someone talking to me, and I just didn't really want to. I, I never went out to a party to meet new men or to meet other men. Just, you know, I don't mind, you know, I meet men in work situations and. But just, I prefer, well, generally I've always preferred to talk to women anyway. Because I think I always found women to be more interesting to talk to. Um, it's a generalisation. But I think I'm quite feminine in some ways. I think I've got quite a feminine-ness. Maybe quite a female brain in some ways so I can feel a bit more connected to females than to males but I get on with most people anyway to be fair I feel like I should get back to talking about hats <laughs> hats very important subject hats amount of time so honestly when I was a DJ I guess it's just a bloke wanting to talk about life and sometimes I might not quite like that but I'd just be working and it's nice that you've it's, I don't know just sometimes the conversations would be a bit forced you know like let's now talk about football let's now talk about golf let's now talk about motorsports let's now talk about women let's now talk about any it's just uh It was never like that. I don't know why I'm trying to make out that that's, that's what it was like. It wasn't. Although I have known people that like to set out a, a timetable of subjects to talk about during lunch. But I'm never really quite like that. It's just because I don't plan. I don't, I don't, just don't plan. tell you one thing though the temperature's dropped and I have to turn the heating on because it's a bit chilly you know so 
So what other hats have I seen? So I haven't seen astronaut hats in person, but I have seen astronaut hats on television and also in, you know, in movies. Yeah, and I suppose on television, apart from the movies I've seen on television, where an astronaut would be wearing a hat, and it usually comes with the suit as well, um, because you need to, I think the suit supports the weight of the hat that the astronaut wears, because I get a sense, and I'm not 100% sure because I've never ever um, I've never touched an astronaut's helmet so I've never like had one in my hand so I don't know how heavy they are but I imagine that the the suit is quite heavy and the astronaut's helmet is supported by the suit because it like fits in, doesn't it? And clicks in or something. So I don't know if uh, I don't know the weight of an astronaut's helmet. So I don't know. I've a, I saw a helmet, astronaut's helmet. Um, during like live launches of the space shuttle and also in movies so um, was it Mars just a film called Mars Damon what was his name Matt Damon see got to see Matt Damon's helmet I've never seen Matt Damon's helmet before. And, uh, he, he was wearing, wearing his costume, uh, his, with his, you know, the astronaut's costume for quite a while in that film. Never got to see the end of it. Never got to see the end of it. I should make the effort. There's quite a few films over the years that I've seen the beginning, but I've not seen the end. And some films I've seen kind of the middle, but not the beginning or the end. And the occasional one where I've only just seen the end, but not the beginning or the middle. But I haven't seen the end. It kind of takes away the point of watching the beginning or the middle. Because you know what happens. You know what happens at the end. That's why I didn't watch Noah's Ark. And why I don't watch any war films. You know, I already know the ending. There's no point watching it. It'd be different if there was a, if it was a, like a new ending, like a different slant, a different, different take to it. It'd be interesting. You know, let's say Noah's Ark, and the floods came, but then. A, a big giant sausage started floating down and pushed the ark over and made a big hole in the in the ship but the hole was blocked by the sausage so it was still able to keep afloat 
and the outside of the sausage, the outside were in the water. They used the sausage as a rudder. So that was like the first ever rudder invented for boats. And the rest of it, they just ate the sausage from inside because they were hungry. And they hadn't figured out what all of them could eat. What could we eat that we all like? And no one could like come to an agreement about what they all could eat. What do we like? What do you like? What do I like? Well, I like this, you like that. Other people like other things. But it turned out that they're all quite partial to a bit of sausage. So it turned out okay. They all shared the same sausage. They all had nice, uh, you know, nice little nibble. And it kept them going until uh, it was time to repopulate the world, I suppose. Um, isn't it amazing how well behaved all the animals were? It just shows you that we do pull together, you know, when we need to. Even the animals, because you had lions, gazelles in the same enclosure. And they were, you know, weren't bothering each other. Crocodiles and I'm trying to think what crocodiles eat. Well, obviously sausage on in that situation. Even the elephants. The elephants, you know, they said, yeah, well, admittedly, we would prefer to have trees and eat, you know, a plant-based diet. But we've realised that this is a very, very uh, extreme situation. So we, we too will just nibble off, off of Noah's sausage. So that worked out okay. I think it's nice when we get together and make the effort to get on and, you know, I think it makes such a difference to the world. It's a shame they couldn't have kept it going though, really. Imagine if we all just like lived our lives eating off the same sausage. Vegetarian or vegan options, of course. Perhaps there'd be more peace in the world. All due to sausage. No sausage cure the world. I don't know if now I had a hat. To be fair, you'd think, you know, one thing you would want if you're going to be on the ark. Noah's Ark is you'd want to wear a hat wouldn't you it's going to be all that rain it's not even just the rain it's the it's the spray off the sea that would be quite you know I mean if you're wearing glasses you'd have to continuously be wiping your glasses unless of course maybe Noah had contact lenses But you would need, basically Noah would need my old cowboy hat because it had a string underneath to keep it on. He'd need something to keep his hat on because 
I'm guessing it was quite windy. I don't know. I don't mean because all the animals are eating sausage, it's going to be a lot of wind produced. I don't mean that. I'm talking about, you know, the natural elements of the sea and the wind and, you know, all of those technical things. But then didn't he have his family with him as well? So maybe they had hats. I don't know. So I don't know if he had a hat. What other hats? Roman hats. I don't know. But I have a, a recollection that I might have had a Roman outfit when I was a kid. Pretty sure I had a big sword, like a big plastic sword, but it was hard and it did hurt people when I hit them with it. So it's, I was a kid. Um, yeah, I think it was, I got this vague recollection that it was grey. But also all like silvery grey, bluey grey silver, and also one that was gold. And uh, is it a scabbard? Do you know the thing that you put the sword into? I'm pretty sure I had a. I had. Yeah, I just have a recollection of holding a, a Roman's helmet in my hand and just like patting the top of it of the helmet because it was quite a nice helmet because it I think it came down and covered more of my face because it was like a I suppose like a a replica of how a, a a Roman's helmet would have been. It's nice and shiny, and I think I'm pretty sure that Roman's helmet leaked a little bit of. Uh, I think there was a thing at the top so if it was raining it kind of the water would get in or maybe it was at the side I don't remember other aspects of that costume maybe there was a top and like a like a grass skirt, like a pleated thing that the Romans used to wear. I might have had a policeman's hat. We used to call them policeman's hat, but they're police person's hat now. A police hat, yeah. And. Because when I was a kid, policemen and police women used to have different hats. So the policemen used to have big, tall, kind of spiky helmets. And their helmet would have a, like a policeman's helmet would have like a big, like a metal thing at the end. Like a piercing kind of thing. It's weird. It was a stud at the top and a little visor at the bottom kind of that's, you, do, you need to go online and have a look to see what I mean and there used to be the old uh, joke say uh, oh you you got your sandwiches under there today Bob 
Bobby and he'd say no and if you say that again I'll arrest you no he didn't but it was, it was kind of a an ongoing joke I think that the policemen used to have their packed lunch inside you know inside their helmet whether or not they did I, I really don't know It wasn't something I really ever asked myself because you know I used to see people say it on television and it refer to food inside a it used to be a thing what was inside a police a policeman's helmet I know some joke about it I can't remember the punchline but I think it used to oh, I can't remember it was something about um, pork sandwiches or something oh, I, I forget I forget but females um, police officers used to wear a flat hat a flat cap not a flat cap but it's a like a flat hat so they had very different hats to in fact I think female police officers I think very much similar to um, traffic warden hats if I'm correct so they they had different hats I don't know if the men had those hats to make them look taller because it did I mean it was probably a good two foot added another couple of foot onto them and I wonder if they, you know, I just think how much water could one get inside of the police hat? So I heard once that there was a, like a boat in Lake, local to where I lived, and there was a, like a child was in one of the boats but it lost the oar the oar had like fallen into the water and the the kid was like getting a bit upset like help me Mr Policeman what's in your hat and you know the policeman was like oh so uh this is just the myth this is the story that the policeman took his hat off and put it into the water filled the hat, his hat with water right to the top and when he'd done that the, the boy that was in the boat was just sitting at the bottom of the, the lake because all the water had been taken out by the hat by the pl policeman's hat because it was it was so big but I don't know I don't know I'm not saying that's true um, but that's what that's what my brain just told me just then so it was quite an amazing feat of uh, kind of a super superhero moment really I suppose what other hats I used to wear like woolly hats 
in the winter. And I still do sometimes. Because I find um, by wearing something woolen or like warm on my head and covering my ears, when I'm outside in the cold, my head doesn't feel as cold as it would do if I wasn't wearing that hat. And my ears don't feel as cold as I imagine that they would do if I wasn't wearing that hat uh, to keep my ears warm in that cold weather. So I think it's useful uh, to have a hat on when it's uh, a bit cold. And although at the moment I haven't shaved my head because I do have a tendency to shave my head you know maybe a few times a year and just shave it all off but at the moment I'm just leaving it I think it's now that as I look at the front of my hair I look in the mirror of my hair now and the front is receding and there's less hairs there than there used to be and the hairs that are left look at me as if to say please don't please don't cut us off please just just let us be here we like it here so I'm thinking of just leaving them or do you know Jimmy Somerville you might need to google this bit he used to have hair but he used to shave his head and have a little bit of hair right at the front a little patch and he'd shave the rest of his hair I might do that. He used to sing a song called Don't Leave Me This Way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know the rest of it. But it was Don't Leave Me This Way. A, A, A. Ah, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. My tender kiss. Ooh, baby. Don't leave me this way a a a a a da 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 yeah I can't remember this don't know if he ever wore a hat though he might have done because I know from personal experience that when I have shaved my head I've needed that extra layer when I've gone out even when it hasn't been um, particularly cold just to keep some heat in my scalp is a reason that I would wear a hat you know like a uh, I nearly said fuzz, fuzzy hat not a fuzzy hat a woolly I don't know if it's woolly it's probably synthetic material Um, trying to think of someone else that wore a hat ah yes someone that wore a hat was one of my bosses when I did window canvassing back when I was about 18 years old he used to wear a hat and I think he had more than one hat but one of the hats he used to wear was uh, one of the ones that keep that have like the ear section that go all the way down and it's kind of the kind of hat that I'd imagine I'd wear if I was mountaineering or at least living in a mountaineering area 
somewhere where there's like snow for months on end. Um, Switzerland, maybe? Is it, is it snowy there? I think, isn't it? Uh, so I, he used to wear a hat like that. I remember once he was, we used to all be on, on foot, so he'd park up, we'd all get out and he'd say, you go that way, you go that way, and knock on every door and stuff like that. And uh, I remember one evening we all kind of met up. He wasn't anywhere to be seen, but me and the other two canvassers, we started talking about him and making fun of him and because he had a a big moustache I was very young this, but we were anyway we were making fun of him and uh, we saw someone come out of the house and look at us and I thought oh that's a bit strange and he got into his car and he's still was looking at us and then he drove away and as he drove away there was my boss crouched down doing his shoelaces up behind the car listening to what we were saying and it was so embarrassing all I could do was laugh we just laughed our heads off because he clearly wasn't spending that five minutes doing his shoelaces up so he must have been doing his shoelaces up and then he heard us talking and he just crouched down and stayed there and then this man came out of his house probably thought what on earth's going on why is this man crouching down behind my car and why are these other people just standing there but that's a guess I, that man might not have been thinking that he might have just been thinking I need a Mars bar I've got to get to the garage I need a Mars bar I love Mars bars perhaps he was driving off to because he left his hat somewhere so there's no way of knowing is there he might have had a hat he might have visited somebody and then realised he's left his hat there because when you drive it's quite easy to leave coats and hats and without realising it it's very difficult to do that if you're a pedestrian I've never once walked home from a coffee shop in the winter and thought, oh, wait a minute, where's my coat? No, I generally put it on. But if you're just jumping in and out of a warm car, I've seen people in shorts in the winter go to the garage to get petrol. And there's me wrapped up with everything except a hat. But I had that hat, a trilby, when I was about 16. It kept blowing off. It kept blowing onto the floor. I think it was too big for my head. So that's it for me for today. I'm going to go and do some things. Turn the heating on. I'm supposed to have snow tomorrow. That'll be interesting. I'll tell you all about it. You take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you next time.